Okay, in this video I'm going to make a phasing harness. I've got some RG59 here which is 75 ohm coax and I've got a length of it here which I've measured and uh, this piece of coax is uh, actual 66 feet 2 inches long but I don't know what the velocity factor or how fast the RF will travel down this coax so I'm going to figure that out and I'm going to use an oscilloscope and a function generator to do that. There's another gentleman on the on YouTube here that has shown how to do this. It's pretty easy. I'll show the scope here in a minute and um, we'll actually figure out what the velocity factor is. Normally for this kind of uh, measurement you need what's called a TDR scope which is a time domain reflectometry scope but you can do it with a regular oscilloscope and a function generator it's uh, actually pretty simple so from my function generator I'm gonna feed a signal in to channel 1 let me get this thing set up here I'm set up here with the uh, function generator feeding the signal in to a T connector and off that T connector I have my spool of coax and I know how long this coax is now because I've actually measured it. And it is um, 66 foot 2 inches. And if you look at the scope here, I've got some cursors set up showing where the signal comes in. It goes down to the end of the coax and then and it's open down there. And I'm about 160 nanoseconds. And to show you, I'm going to short out the end of the coax or you can see it change here at the end see where it, go, it spikes up here if I short out the end with just this piece of metal I can do it see that go up and down there so that's the end of the coax so I know that my coax is hundred and sixty one nanoseconds or hundred and sixty nanoseconds long at hundred and sixty nanoseconds in free space um, RF travels at 11.78 inches per nanosecond. So if I took 160 nanoseconds times 11.78 inches, I would come up with 157.066 inches. But that's a round trip because it goes down to the end of the coax and then it comes back. So this is actually two times the length of my coax. So if I took that measurement of 100 and 57 uh, feet and divided it by 2 I would actually come out with 78.53 foot or feet and if I then took that dimension and divided it into the actual length of the coax which is 66.167 feet I would come up with a velocity factor of approximately 84 percent so that's what I'm going to use to calculate how long to cut my coax and we'll do that here in a minute. Before we go on I'm going to explain those um, measurements on the uh, scope a little bit more so that you can understand it. So as you recall the speed of light is 186,000 miles per second and if we break that down into feet we can multiply it times 5,280 feet per mile gives us 982,080,000 feet per second and if we took that length and divided it by one billion because we want to get it down into nanoseconds one billionth of a second it comes out to 0 0.98208 feet and 0 0.98208 times 12 to give us inches is 11.78 inches so our um, our measured coax length as I measured it was 66 foot 2 inches or 66.167 feet. The around trip electrical time measured on the scope was 160 nanoseconds. So half of that for a single trip of the electrical length is 80 nanoseconds. So if we took 80 nanoseconds times 11.78, that's the how far an electrical signal travels uh, per nanosecond in, in free space, 
That equals 942.4 inches or 78.53 feet. So if that is 100%, that's the speed of light, and our actual measured length is 66.167, that's 84.26% of 100% or of 78.53. So I just rounded that to 84%. So that's what I'm going to use as my velocity factor for this coax when I cut the coax to the right length. Next I'm going to show you the overall goal of these antennas. I'm going to have my two loops and I'm going to have the phasing harness between the two and my goal is to have the two loops approximately four feet apart. So loop one, loop two, here's the mast. And to get there Let's talk about our phasing harness. So we're going to have our feed line coming in and we're going to go into a quarter wave phasing stub. Actually it can be any odd multiple lengths of a quarter wave. So one quarter wave length, three quarter wave lengths, five quarter wave lengths. But we're going to use a quarter to start with here to show you the example. And it equals uh, 90 degrees of, uh, of the wave. So a 50 ohm feed line going into a 75 ohm matching stub actually looks like 100 ohms to the feed line. Since we're going to have two loops with these phasing stubs or matching stubs, since it looks like 100 ohms, we'll have two stubs in parallel, so it'll look like 50 ohms to the feed line. So it should be a nice match, or it's close to that anyway. So our matching stub length. Um, again, if we took the number of feet that light travels per second, divided by our target frequency, of 144.2 megahertz we came out with 6.8105 foot per one wavelength so a quarter wavelength then would be 1.60 or excuse me 1.7026 feet for one quarter wavelength and if we multiplied that for 12 by 12 to give us inches we'd have 20.43 inches but remember the signal is not going to travel as fast in our coax as it does through free space. So we used our velocity factor that we just calculated at 84%. So 20.43 inches times 0.84 gives us 17.162 inches for our quarter wavelength stub for this matching stub here. Okay, so Again, our antenna, the goal is to put them four feet apart, 24 inches. The, the dimension that we figured, the 17.162 inches, it's not going to reach. But our other option is to go a multiple odd number of stubs to get us to four feet apart. So if we took, instead of one quarter wavelength, we took three quarter inch or, or three quarter wavelengths, three quarter wavelength, 75 ohm matching stub. Now it's going to be 51.486 inches or just rounded 51 and a half inches. So we're going to have extra coax. That's why I've kind of drawn it as a squiggly line there. But we'll have uh, 51 and a half inches on each one of these stubs and we'll figure out what to do with that later. Oh, by the way, I'm out here working in my little workshop, which is outside near the road. Again, lots of activity in the neighborhood, cars driving by, lots of uh, yard work, air blowers going. So if there's lots of cuts in this video, it's because of all the noise distractions. I have to keep stop recording and restarting because of the noise. In fact, here comes another car now. It's amazing how much uh, noise there is when you... Uh, are trying to pay attention to that you know extraneous noise to your recording anyway so that's where our, our goal is so the next step is to actually make these stubs 
and then we'll uh, plug them in and try them out.